This is the sound of winter. Well, actually it's just another day at my grain bin permission, with winds gusting up to 20 miles per hour. The weather was pretty bad in the first half of the day, and on top of it all there was a kestrel in the area, keeping most birds in the vicinity on edge. Now this guy is not helping. And that is not exactly some sort of a nature's pest control, because those small-sized predators usually hunt smaller birds and ground targets. Due to the high winds that day, I took my K1 Light 25 caliber with me, which is an amazing compact semi-automatic bullpup by Huben, packing an extraordinary punch and showing great results with a wide variety of projectiles. But my go-to ammo for this gun are the 38 grain Zun slugs with a 0.253 diameter to better fit the non-removable magazine of the K1 Light. At a muzzle velocity of 920 feet per second. The scope is the high-end LRS 5-25x56 by Scandinavian Arms and Schmidt and & Bender, and you'll see why it's a great scope in a bit. That's 51 yards, and the angle is more than 25 degrees upward. I'm gonna hold under a little. Spot on. The cat heard my shot and it had to investigate. But she can't reach the crow. There was a splash down. Actually, neither can I. There is a pitchfork here and the crow is right beneath it. That gives us an opportunity to take it out of the water. I'm hoping there are no villagers and Count Dracula anywhere nearby. Pardon my silly sense of humor. Mm. The very first try. Actually, I have another idea for this guy. I don't believe I'm touching it with my bare hands. I'm gonna set him right here, where I have a clear shot. It may attract some more of its buddies, maybe magpies or other pests. It's not a pigeon, and I assure you, it's not tasty. And actually, I'm now gonna get some sanitizer on my hand. And even though it took a while, using the dead crow as a decoy did produce results later that day. That is 64 yards, but the angle is pretty steep. I'm gonna hold under just a little bit. Oh, the pop was immense. The Castro is back. Anyway, the Castro is gone. He went chasing some sparrows, and I decided to create a feeder of some sort to attract some doves today. And by attract, I meant get him to land somewhere where I have a clearer shot. They are already here. I don't know if you can see the dove through the branches. Okay, let's say it's ready. Oh, and uh, this stone I'm going to remove. And look at this. I think those are mealworms, also a treat for birds in the cold winter. Oh no, my friend, this is not going to work like this. No, don't stay so close to the feeder, okay? Go. Go away, or there will be no doves or pigeons for you today. No kidding. Yes, thank you. 
Yes, darling, it's cold, it's windy, and I'm sure you're hungry, but now it's the waiting game. Sixty six yards. Oh, he just took a dump. I'm outdoors, the pigeon is indoors, 58 yards, and I'm sorry to say that even on high-end scopes there is some glare in those instances. Got him. There is a hungry cat too. And what are you waiting for? Go for it. On the prowl. <laughs> Enjoy it. I think I found one of the secret hiding places of the cat. Or at least one of the places where it eats the pigeons. Right next to it is this contraption. They used to use it to trap pigeons. As many as they could at a time. Call me crazy guys, but I think shooting them is much more humane. Well, to be honest with you, this thing with the improvised feeder didn't exactly work out, so I'll keep targeting them up there in the trees. 40 yards, holding under a little bit. Look at that. The crow decoy was finally spotted by a number of corvid species. There were jackdaws and magpies too, but I decided to focus on the rest of the crows. I imagine they're mourning their dead body. 50 yards holding under a little bit. The image is a little shaky and that's because I quickly leaned against a building rather than waste time finding a spot where I could assume a more stable yeah, stance. That crow escaped my shot for the second and last time. But before I go on, I will slow down this piece of footage so that you can take the time and see just how clear the image is. And mind you, that's reflected off of the mirror of my camera mount and recorded by an action cam. As you can see, there is no chromatic aberration either. After that, I didn't make the mistake of letting the crow get away for a third time. Ray down. As the sun was setting and there were no more targets to dispatch, I chose a point of aim on an old dilapidated wall and fired five shots at a hundred yards, just to see how the K1 light could perform in such conditions. I think the results were pretty good for shooting, leaning on the trunk of my car and in wind. And before I left, I collected the last two birds I shot that day. Well, good thing one of those did not splash in the water. But the other one did. So I'll be using this thing for the second time today. <laughs> 